Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this series. My name is Abraham Leo, and today I have a very cool trick for you guys. Sorry, I'm looking at this thing over here at the, at the OBS, but uh, uh, there we go. Here we are. So, um, on Thursday's video, I was doing the replacement. If you haven't seen the series about building the medieval lighthouse, you should check it out, of course. Uh, but I was doing this like sort of like pillars for all of the docks on the, on the lighthouse, and um, I manually placed everything where they needed to be even though I already had placeholder objects for them. So one of the uh, viewers, whose name I will of course credit, because he was the one that gave me this idea, was Ankur Joshi. Uh, he mentioned that there's a tool built in Maya, which is called Replace Object. And um, I didn't know about this tool. That's why I love being a teacher, because I learn new things every day as well. And um, that allows me to, of course, teach them to you. So here on the modify menu inside of Maya, we have this guy right here, which is replace object. So I took a look at it and I uh, realized that it's actually a very, very powerful tool. So I'm going to show you how this works so that you too can utilize this for your own project. So let's let's have a, a, a hypothetical scenario. Let's say we are building like, um, like a wall. We're building a wall. And in this wall, we want to hang uh, pieces like portraits, right? And uh, we, we're, we are not sure about what kind of like border for the portraits we're going to uh, want, but we do know where the, the planes are going to be. So I'm going to position a couple of cubes here and I'm actually going to scale them so that they kind of like match. Let's say that's going to be like my portrait right there. Okay. So I'm going to duplicate this guy and then let's say we want a portrait right there. Let me turn on uh, ambient occlusion so we can see a little bit clearer. And let's say we want right there, one over there. One of there, one of there. You, you, you've seen this this kind of walls, right? Like imagine like an old mansion where you have like a lot of, uh, of portraits from, from all the people that live there. And some of them are going to be bigger. Some of them are going to be smaller. So I think I'm, I'm going to try this with scale. Let's see if it works. So let's try a couple of them that are not the same size. So we know that that's the exact position where we want our portraits or whatever object. This applies to anything that you can imagine. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to model this thing in the in a nice way so i am gonna go here i'm gonna grab these borders let's extrude them out like this i'm gonna get rid of this guys right here let's bridge this and this there's a lot of million ways to do this uh but we pretty much created like a like a picture frame right now i'm gonna make it a little bit thinner and let's start adding some details so for instance this inner border i want it to be softened so i'm gonna bevel this add a big fraction and several segments so we get a very nice round effect and then this one right here, and I definitely want to like bevel it as well. There we go. So something like that. And then let's add some of those like very interesting details that some of this like uh, portraits have. Like the old portraits, you'd have a lot of uh, like extra like extrusions and stuff, right? So let's say something like this, and let's do a little bit of offset. Just a little bit, maybe a little bit less thickness. Right? Yeah, let's go in. And we have this very nice portrait right here, right? So. It would be a pain to do exactly what I did on the on the Thursday video and just like grab this guy and the position it where every single other object is, right? So I think we can grab everything here and uh, I'm gonna keep the transformations just for now. And the way this works is very, very simple. You select the objects that you want to replace. You select the, the object that you want to replace them with, which is this one right here. And we're gonna go to this replace objects tool. Now there's a couple of options. First, do we copy the rotation and the scale? If we hit apply right now, you're gonna see that um, the objects are gonna be like really, really big and placed in a really, really weird way. So we can like deselect them. And as you can see, that's gonna be a little bit closer. Uh, I think in this case, we do need to freeze the transformations. Let's try that. So again, one, two, three, so like this guy and hit apply. And we are getting the duplicate, but it is moving them a little bit to the side. And I think it's moving them to the side because it's taking this point into, into account. So I'm actually going to move this guy oh, to the center of the grid. I'm going to freeze the transformations and let's do that now. So one, two, three, this guy and hit apply. There we go. And as you can see, these guys have been replaced uh, with the ones on the wall. And now it's, it's super easy. Now let's take a look if this like scale works properly. So let's try one, two, grab this guy right here, hit apply. Okay, the scale didn't work good because we don't have this one. Let's say scale, no, okay. Let's freeze transformations now. And let's try it again. Not, not really working as I expected. So I might need to take a look at, at this a little bit more to see if we can translate or, or transfer the scale a little bit more properly. Because right now with the one and two, as you can see, it transfers the scale. Let's try the other one. So one and two. Yeah, it, it kind of makes it uh, different. So, so that's fine for now. So what I want to show you here is there's one specific option that I'm using here. 
which is called, oh, this one, there we go, which is called this uh, instance option, right? So what's happening here is I actually made all of this guys instances and instances are very important types of geometry inside of uh, 3D packages that not only share the exact same shape as the origin that we're using, which is this one right here, it also connects them to it. So any change I would do to this one will be propagated to all of the other ones over here. So this is very important. Let's say like I want to like modify the scale now again. Let's say this is going to be like a really big one. And then this is going to be a small one. Like we can definitely change all of these things. But now let's say I want to bevel the corners. Maybe I don't want these guys to be square portraits. I want them to be like hexagonal portraits. Uh, well, if they're instances, it should be fairly easy to just double click this guy, this guy, this guy and this guy and now if we hit a uh, bevel there we go all of the objects have now changed to this new uh geometry because they're they're instances of the original geometry so this is super super important where you're still not sure of how things are going to turn out and you want to keep everyone the same uh this is going to work just fine i believe uvs also get transferred so if i check the uvs right now for this one for instance you're going to see that they're a complete mess but if i go to this one and we do our traditional uv setup let, let's say uv uh, let's do a planner mapping right here, and then we're going to go UV, 3D cut, and just cut like the uh, backside because it's pretty much a flat surface. I'm just going to say Control U, and uh, now, technically, I think, yep, as you can see, all of the properties from the objects have been transferred, so now they all share the same UVs. So instances that are super, super powerful. Now, you can, of course, select this other option right here, which is the copy option, which will not uh, change the, the object. Like, they will be separate objects, so you are going to be able to modify them as a separate entity inside of Maya. But instances, super, super cool. And uh, that's it. That's it, guys. Like, one of the, again, one of the great things about this is you can have, um, like, whatever object you want. Here, I'll show you another little trick here. Let's say we want to do like a, like a magical, like let's say a casino um, talks to us and says, hey, we want to do like a little image for our Instagram where dice are just floating around, right? So what I can do is I can grab a cube and say, yeah, how many dice do you want? Do you want? And maybe they're like, uh, we're the, our lucky number is number seven. So we want 77 dice. Okay, 77, very specific number, right? So I'm just going to grab this guy. And I'm going to duplicate this like 77 times. So let's call it this dice underscore uh, zero. And I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to grab all of them. Control D, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's uh, oh, actually eight, nine, ten. <laughs> there we go. So now we have um, 77 uh, dice. We should have 77 dice. I'm pretty sure. Or do we have one more than we want? There we go. We have an extra set. So there we go. So we have 77 dice. I'm going to select all of them, and then I'm going to go into, remember, the bonus tools that we talked about? We're going to go bonus tools, which, by the way, if you haven't heard about this once, it's a little add-on that you can download in the in Google. So just download uh, Maya bonus tools, and it's this little plugin. You just install it. It's a, like a little extra software that gets installed, uh, and you get some extra cool tools here. And I'm going to go um, bonus tools, modify, randomize transforms basic. And let's say we want to randomize where these things are in X, Y, and C. Uh, from minus 20 to 20. And if we hit a random move, boom. Like we're gonna get all of these areas right there. So we have a lot of variation. And now we wanna randomize the rotations of the cube. So again, we're gonna rotate from zero to 360 in all axis. And we're gonna hit, boom, rotate. And now you can see that everyone's pretty much <laughs> like going crazy everywhere. Um, here, we will definitely need to like grab a couple of them and say like, yeah, you know what? Like we definitely wanna move a couple of them uh, out of the way so that they're not like intersecting. But we have a very crazy composition that we, it took us what, three seconds to do, right? Instead of having to hand place everything. Now let's create a small dice. This is one of the exercises from our Intro to Maya course. So if you're new to modeling, follow along and you're gonna be able to get a very nice little die here. So uh, the way you model a D6 sided dice, very simple. You're gonna grab all of the edge loops or all of the edges of a normal cube and you're gonna bevel them. You're going to modify the fraction so that it's a small fraction and two segments so that we get this rounded effect. And then you're going to go into Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop, and you're going to insert two edge loops right here. So we're going to have two right here, two right here, and two right here. So now every single face has been divided into nine sections. It is very important that we do it in that specific order. Otherwise, the faces, the square faces, are not going to be uniform. So after that, you just select five faces here. And every single die, if you want a balanced die, the opposite numbers should add up to seven. So we have five there, two there, one, two, three, four, five, six there, one over here, one, two, three, four over here, and 
three over here. If you have extra faces, just make sure you deselect them. You don't want to have any extra face right here. We're going to press Control E to extrude this guy. We're going to offset the thing with Control. You press Control and offset this. It's pretty much similar to the shift in Blender, so, so you get like a more a gradual uh, effect. But you can see the number six is not respecting this properly. You need to change key faces together to off so that each face is um, uh, extruded in its own uh, like area or surface. And now we're going to do another Control E to extrude again and just push this in. And that's it. We have our nice little die. If I press number three, you're going to see that we get a soft uh, edge because we're just smoothing it, right? Subdividing this. So I'm going to bring this back to zero, which is the origin right here. And now I'm going to select all of the dices right here. So like that new one, that, that new one that we just created. And I'm going to go again, modify, replace objects. And we're going to say uh, instance because we want to keep the instance in case we're doing any modification to this one. And we're just going to say apply. So as you can see, everything gets pr like process to where it's supposed to be. However, I do want to copy the rotation. Let's see if we can keep that. There we go. So now you can see that every single die keeps the rotation. If we had skills, technically it should work with skills. I'm not sure why it didn't work with the frames, but technically it should work. And uh, now, as you can see, all of the objects are instances. And if we go into this one and we hit number three, I believe, yes, as you can see, since there are instances, every single object right here is going to change to a number three. So yeah, I mean, as you can see right here, it's a super, super easy way to create this sort of effects. And um, it's going to be a, a very, what's the word? Uh, it's a very helpful tool. So I didn't know about this. This is, again, one of the great things about uh, having a, a big community. Everyone can learn a lot from each other, or we can all learn a lot from each other, and we can create this amazing thing. So let's just create this thing, remove this thing right here to create a nice composition. This one, I think we can hide it. Yeah, we can hide it totally. And that's going to do that. And let's create a little bit of, a, of, a, of an interesting like a render effect. So an image like this. And uh, actually, that's I think I want to move this uh, element and the frames back a little bit. Just so we have and I'm going to show you something else I learned uh, this week, which I think is going to be useful for you guys as well. So you guys know that doing a like a proper render takes a little bit of time. And sometimes you just want to do a quick render here inside of Maya. So I'm going to go into rendering. I'm going to use the basic Maya lights like this area light or distance light, which is like a like a sun. And if I press number seven or turn this little light bulb on in the shadows, you're going to see that we have the shadows. However, the shadows are really harsh and really, really bad. So how do you fix that? Super simple. You're going to go into shadows. You're going to use depth map shadows and you're going to push the resolution up. And by pushing the resolution up, you're going to see a softer shadow. And then if you push the filter size up as well, you're going to say you're going to get a softer shadow as well. This is, of course, going to be a little bit uh, intensive on the on the memory. So if you have a, a, um, a slowish computer, you might have a little bit of an issue with this guys right here. Um, it does behave or it does work with specific lights. So if I were to use, for instance, like a spotlight, let's do like a spotlight right here. Something like this. Let's uh, modify the cone angle. So you get like a wide cone angle. You can see harder shadows down there. That's fine. Let's do a penumbra angle. And again, shadows, you change this to depth map shadows, open this up and up the filter. And uh, it is going to, it is going to work a little bit nicer there. Yeah. So now I usually like to do a area light, which is like a global light. And let's do this like to like a point one, just so that the shadows are not as hard. And now we should be able to go, let's go here to modeling standard. Let's close this up and get like a very nice render right here. Let's grab the plane. Just look at like this area. There we go. Let me click outside. And that's our thumbnail right there, guys. So yeah, hopefully you guys like this tool. Simple, quick tool, simple, quick techniques. And uh, that's it for today. Don't worry, we will continue with the Mindible Lighthouse. Uh, we, will be, we will be doing more uh, of those videos. But right now, just a quick video for Saturday. Have a good day. Enjoy. And I'll see you back tomorrow, guys. Bye-bye.